Over 689 million people live on under $1.90 a day. Are we giving the right amount of resources and money to the places which need it most? Is every dollar that government and private charities donate the best use of that dollar for the impoverished people? And to solve the world's poverty issue, I want to use data to tackle real world problems and to create more efficient operations for the greater good of society, and in particular, the issue of poverty. The world is one big data problem. Andrew McAfee of the co-director of the MIT Initiative said that, and our entire world runs on data. From the water we consume, to the shower each morning, to the money we invest in the stock market, every operation we conduct has data attached to it. This data is what our world runs on and at least what can be manipulated for greater good, and numerous organizations, UNICEF, for example, World Bank, Care International, to name a few, claim to help the impoverished, and they definitely do. But it's, if your one dollar is truly going one dollar to the impoverished people, or is it actually in the cents, is it 75 cents, and how can we maximize that one dollar to go to the impoverished? A couple of decades ago, maximizing the per dollar utility to help the poor might have been an unachievable problem. However, with today's advancements, it is possible. But let's take a moment to stop here. What even is per dollar utility? In economics, utility simply means benefit. And per dollar utility refers to what the benefit um, the impoverished people receive per dollar. So how much, how many lives are we impacting, how many lives are we changing, how much food are they receiving? There are so many different factors which go into determining this utility, and we can maximize this in data sense. The question of, do we have enough data in remote places is something that people might ask, and it's a question that is valid. Even if organizations do not have the data to process in rural and suburban villages, they can make their own data through synthetic data. Synthetic data is something which organizations, charities, and foundations can create themselves by simulating the factors and different things that might go on in a given village, town, um, or other place. This is used by computer algorithms in data science and machine learning to create different um, algorithms in order to predict data that could be used towards maximizing this problem. Organizations claim that every dollar makes a difference, and you've probably seen that in a poster, in a video, or some sort of advertisement outside, out and about. But by using data science, synthetic data, and the latest innovations in the data science world, we can truly make a difference with that dollar. With an issue overtaking the lives of 689 million people, that's almost 10% of the world, we must see solutions that go beyond fundraising, beyond raising more money, and compound the effect that we are putting towards the impoverished people with the money we have to bring. However, let's dive a little deeper now, So, The world is ever-changing. And with that, humans have learned to adapt to keep up with the latest trends, discoveries, and events that occur. A question that might be asked by some of you guys is how can all of these models and algorithms keep up with those discoveries? Well, the answer is machine learning. Machine learning is a process of adaptation and changing a computer system based on prior knowledges, experiences, and discoveries that might happen in the future. This is vital so that our program and our algorithms can adapt based on the future circumstances that might occur in the future. And this is vital for this algorithm. Whether it be the Puerto Rican earthquakes in the dawn of 2020, the Ebola virus outbreak in African countries in 2014, countries are always changing, places are always moving, and people are, are always adapting, and our algorithm is to New circumstances will arise, and these algorithms, these like machine learning, prior experiences, will be able to adapt based on these new experiences and maximize every donated dollar, regardless of what comes about. I don't think any of us in this room could have predicted that in 2020 we would have had to shut down the entire world for the COVID-19 pandemic, but machine learning can make that possible now that we have that in our Machine learning is also in computer science, where perfection can be achieved. Humans, let's be honest, we are not perfect. Computers, however, operate at an algorithm, they operate with mathematics and precision. And using this machine learning algorithm and previous experiences and circumstances, we can achieve a much higher rate of perfection for these models than us humans can. 
A learning adaptation algorithm is much more useful than a static algorithm, which is simply, if this happens, do that. In this case, we have a much more adaptive and changing algorithm where if this happens, then we need to look at this factor. Machine learning has so many different avenues that we can explore and also use towards this issue. Now, why would we bother accounting for every single scenario which might occur to the impoverished, whether it be the COVID-19 pandemic or earthquake or currently hurricane in Florida? There are always things occurring in this world that we could not predict and we could also not immediately take action in order for this to happen. We have weather forecasts currently going on. Britain Ian was predicted around a week before by our meteorologists. However, action needs to be taken. And through these algorithms, we can directly devote resources and money towards people who need the money the most at that particular time. Yes, there are always going to be impoverished people throughout the world, but there are some people who need it more at a given time, and some people who might need it a little less than other people at a given time. Examples, prior conditions, and testing are all key categories of a functional and successful model to be used in the real world. Since the issue of global poverty is global, let's deep dive into the 2014 to 2016 Ebola virus outbreak and how machine learning could interpret and retrieve those circumstances to act differently if a similar situation was to occur. As you can see, these are the month and day of the um, Ebola, Ebola pandemic, and perhaps we could have continued to give an equal amount of aid to all the people in the world who are under that $1.90 market threshold. But at this point in time, there were a group of people that required that aid more. And based on learning about this Ebola virus uh, epidemic in Africa, if something were to occur again, let's say in a different country, our machine learning algorithm could use this past experience to account for and also properly give the aid, money, and resources that are needed to that particular country to resolve this outbreak. By building off of this Ebola uh, epidemic in the mid 2010s and even more circumstances, for example, the Puerto Rican earthquakes I referred to earlier, we can perfect this model to a point where it works to perfection and the money, resources, and um, everything else are properly divided into the people who need it and the people who might not need it that, as much. However, the nuances that we have to figure out between data science and machine learning and um, between humans deciding which algorithm they want to use are all secondary to the primary goal of poverty and the fact that there are 689 million people, once again, that are impoverished in this world is an issue that we must solve. And this isn't going to happen overnight. This isn't going to happen in one day. And 700, close to 700 million people is a number that is very high. However, if we can even affect one life, if we, we can even improve one life with our dollar that we do donate, that can be a huge impact. And as we move on with this model, we continue to perfect and refine it over time. That's a machine learning that's by itself compounded with the data science and data science techniques that we utilize in our algorithm. So these factors all combined prove one thing. Poverty is an issue that impacts so many lives today. It is an issue that spans so many people globally. And this is the first step in action that we must take to decrease this time. Thank you.